Hello developers! My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how I do my screencasts. I was originally going to create this video just for my teammates, but then I figured maybe you all are writing blog posts that you'd like to turn into screencasts as well. So I figured this could be a helpful tool for the whole community. So first of all, I have this list of things that I'm going to talk about. So it's always good to have a list so you don't forget and bump your fonts. So the first tip is ensure good lighting and sound. This is from my friend Aaron Parecki and coworker, and he basically shows you how you can get good audio, good video, and good lighting for free. I have Elgato key lights up here. I also have a Sony Alpha 6000 camera it's a DSLR but it's not too expensive it's about $600 and I have a Yeti caster blue microphone and so all of those are what make you know a lot of this possible and it makes it look good I used to use just a 1080p webcam and that was okay but it really didn't have a lot of the colors that you see with this video also Aaron has a YouTube channel that you can find at Aaron PK where he talks a lot about the stuff that he uses for live streaming uh, he uses uh, what's it called it's called a uh, called an ATEM mini and you can allows you to switch like what's being shown not only your webcam but your desktop and uh, it's pretty slick I don't use that but he does I use a cam link 4k which allows me to pull the video in from my Sony into Camtasia where I'm recording this right now. If you have a green screen, make sure and light it. This video is excellent for that. It basically shows you how to light your green screen. It talks about an app called Green Screener that you can put on like the top of your monitor to point at your green screen and see where the hot spots are and take those out. You'll want those so you can delete the background and there's not any weird fuzzy characters in it. You'll notice I'm not using a green screen today. I did used to use one and I'd put myself down in the corner and what I found is newscasters don't do that. So why should I? Newscasters often switch from full face to going to who's ever reporting on you know the story and then back to the person that's the newscast and so I like to do my screencast that way I learned this from Phil Webb and a number of other folks so I don't take credit for it I've just done the little guy down in the corner for probably a year and I like this style better but you might like both so you know do what you want and figure out what you like make sure to make it fun maybe you put on some fun glasses and ah! do something silly but don't just speak in a monotone you'll notice that newscasters people that give us the news they don't speak in a monotone they have very inflectious voices and faces and stuff like that so make sure and have a little fun with it use crisp crisp is a tool that basically will cancel the background noise out so if you have dogs or kids or anyone in your household or maybe can some construction going on outside crisp will delete that background noise and make it so you can make videos like this without you know worrying that someone just ruined it by ringing your doorbell so I highly recommend crisp another great tool is switch res X so if you have a 38 inch wide monitor like I do this switch res X tool will allow you to constrain it so you'll see I'm using 1920 by 1080 so when I upload that to YouTube everything you know looks good versus if I record it at the full resolution it'd be very difficult for people to see and especially since a lot of people are consuming on mobile devices you want to make your videos mobile friendly and that includes bumping your fonts you'll notice when I started uh, this wasn't that big right you can do it like small no one's gonna like that make sure and make them big so people can read them if you're using an IDE or command line I typically like to do 20 to 30 point and it looks big for you but for the audience it's not gonna look that big and they're really gonna love it create a demo script you'll notice here I have my how to screencast demo script well for my videos I have this demo script that I create so let's say we have this blog post that's on uh, kubernetes to the cloud with spring boot and J hipster when I first started doing screencasts what I would do is I'd read this right I would kind of summarize as I I'm reading through it and I'm scrolling and then I'm scrolling and then I'm scrolling and then I'm doing things and scrolling and that's just not a great experience for the user so what I found is I take the important parts of the blog post put them into a demo script I write an ASCII doctor that's the a doc extension there and if I have my ASCII doctor plugin and click on it you'll see it looks pretty good and so I have a table of contents there that I obviously skip through but everything else is you know pretty straightforward and then what I can do is put it on the left and I can you know put a terminal on the right here and then I can go through things so it makes it much easier to follow along without having to memorize everything because memorizing stuff that's hard 
I also recommend recording live templates for your code. So if you're someone like Josh Long or Venkat Subramaniam, those guys are so smart, they like remember everything in their heads and they live code without really having any tips. I'm not that smart. So what I do is I record live templates. So for instance, this is uh, from my recent post on native Java with Micronaut Corcus and Spring Boot. You'll see this is a security configuration for Spring Boot to set up an OAuth 2 resource server. So what you can do is take that, you can go to tools, save as live template, and then type an abbreviation. For instance, security config, and then you save it. And then if you create this new class during your demo and you just have to type security config and boom, spits out all that code. So that can be very handy for writing a lot of code quickly and not copying and pasting from your script or from your blog post. You might have noticed when I showed you those live templates or when I showed you my demo script, I was putting things you know, on the left like that or I can put it on the right like that. Those are keyboard shortcuts that I use with Hammerspoon. So Hammerspoon is this app right here and it's got all my hotkeys enabled in my init.luau. And if you want to see my script for that, you can go into gist here and you'll see my mash is option control command key. So all those three right next to each other. And then I can move things to the right or the left. And I also use shift it, which allows you to just do half the screen. So it's very slick, very handy, highly recommend it. Keep going through your mistakes. When I first did a live course for Pluralsight, I flew out to Chicago. I hung around for three or four hours, they filmed me, and then they did all the editing and that was it. When I first started doing screencasts, I would always start over when I made mistakes. And so Pluralsight kind of taught me that you just keep going. Pause, take a drink of water, and start over. And you can edit it out later. So no big deal with mistakes, start over, much easier. Plan your intro and outro. So know what you're gonna say at the very beginning. And I usually use Brave and browser tabs at the end i say you know follow my team on octodev and then i'll command two follow me on twitter and then subscribe to our youtube channel so those are very handy for having available at the end and then i talked about editing options right where you can have the small person head in the corner with the green screen you got to be able to delete your background to make that look really good or you can do like my new style that i've learned from philip webb where full head switch to full screen whatever you like I also recommend recording in 15 minute snippets. So one of the problems I've had with the DSLR and the Sony Handycam is sometimes they'll time out after 30 minutes and I do have a plug now so it shouldn't do that but sometimes the video freezes. So what I try to do is record my videos in 15 minute increments now and so if it does freeze, well, you didn't lose anything. So highly recommend that. So one of the funny things and many people probably don't believe this is the thumbnail for YouTube makes a huge difference. We started doing YouTube videos about two years ago and Heather and Aaron on my team were like, you gotta have your face in it. Your face has gotta be big. They went to this video conference and they learned all this and it's true and it works. And so you might be looking at my thumbnails being like, Matt, you look so goofy. Like, come on, but it gets the clicks. So it's not quite like a clickbait headline, but people like to see faces and they like to click on faces. So even though it might seem weird at first, put your face in the thumbnail. This video here is excellent for how to use Canva to do that. So here's how to make a YouTube custom thumbnail. Again, I'll put this in the description and it's uh, about 10 minutes and obviously it's just showing me an ad here, but quick and easy thumbnails with Canva makes it really nice. And I also use a tripod with a remote for my iPhone to take my selfie. Because what I found is, you know, during COVID, my wife's working in the other room. And if I go to her and I'm like, I need a selfie or I need a picture taken of me right now, she's like, I'm busy. And so it's tough to get those. So I set up my own system and can take my own pictures now. And then I also keep a list of everything to do before the actual screencast. So my other list is things to do before I start a screencast. So I always bring this up, I always run through them. You will probably have your own because what you'll find is some bad things might happen during your screencast and you never want to do those again. So these are the ones that I've written down over the years. Turn off time machine because if that's running, like running code or creating a jhipster app or something like that typically takes a lot longer. If sitting, use a stool, looks a little better. I don't know if that's as relevant, but this is what I did at one time. I also took a green screen that was cloth and put it over my chair. So that was a way of deleting the chair. If I'm doing an Okta demo, I'll try to delete the app so it doesn't create any sort of problems. You want to always start with a clean slate. I'll have those startup browser tabs and those end ones. I have a fireplace in the back. So before I crisp, I would turn that off because otherwise it would be noisy in the background. I've noticed that before crisp as well, I had to eat. So I didn't have stomach growls in the video. Hide the date and time and battery. So it's not as easy with uh, the latest version of 
Mac OS Big Sur, but you'll see I have just a clock up here. So you can change it from digital to analog and then it's not as obvious what the time is. The reason you want to do that is so you can edit, you know, things out and uh, people don't notice that the time has changed. So there's a digital version, right? And uh, analog version. You can also on the digital version, there's a way option click. You can change it from white to gray. So that can be handy as well. Practice once beforehand. This is what I've noticed very much so is that the more practice, the less editing. So maybe run through it a few times, you know, doesn't take that long to do the practice. The editing can take 10 times as long as it took to record the video. So practice, practice, practice. Adjust the screen resolution, you know, if you have Switch Res X like I do or a big monitor. Test audio and verify it works. Actually, before I even recorded this video, I took a little snippet in Camtasia and then played it back. You know, it was only like 10 seconds and my mic wasn't plugged in. So I didn't know that. I was using Crisp, right? That was my microphone. So make sure and test your audio because the worst thing you want to do is record a 30 minute video and then find out there's no audio record. It's the worst feeling in the world. So just record a little bit first and check it out. Uh, confirm sudo works. I've had situations where I couldn't sudo because my password actually expired or something of that sort and I just couldn't log in. So the video is kind of over, right? I should have kept going, but I was like, Ugh. This is terrible. Uh, turn on do not disturb so you don't get notifications, you know, about email or Slack messages or anything like that. Uh, make sure your clock syncs automatically, especially if you're doing anything with authentication and OpenID Connect because it'll validate those JWT tokens. And if there's any sort of skew longer than, you know, 30 seconds, it might not be valid. So you'll be like, why doesn't this work? And the reason is because your clock's not synced to the internet. Uh, clear your browser history so people don't see, you know, things you typed in input fields and start crisp, of course. So those are all my tips. And as I mentioned before, follow us on YouTube and hopefully we'll have some more videos like this that you're going to love to make you a better developer and screencaster. Cheers.